There's a few key aspects when thinking about pie. Typically you want to have a really nice and flaky crust that's made with wheat flour and some type of fat. Here we have some butter that we're going to use for the crust, so we'll just cut that up. I like to put this in the freezer to let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. You don't want it to freeze completely, but you do want it to be nice and cold. This is where phase transitions becomes very important because the type of fat that's typically used in pie is something that melts at a higher temperature. So we can work with our hands and it's a solid material which will then melt once the pie is baked. The water will start to convert into steam which can cause expansion of these little pockets and gives rise to a flaky crust. So now we're going to prepare our flour base. Add a little bit of salt. This is mostly for the flavor. Once you have your ice cold fat or butter, coat it with the flour and into um, very small pea sized pieces. So water, ice water is commonly added. You only need a few tablespoons. The flour contains a lot of carbohydrates, but it also contains the proteins, which is extremely important for the texture and structure of bread products. In the pie, however, we don't want there to be an extremely dense network of these proteins because that would result in a very dense and not very flaky crust. Rather, these chunks of fat will help prevent some of the formation of the, and the binding of these proteins together into a tight network. Uh, and you can also, as has been um, explored, you can add an alcohol such as vodka to pie crust as well. Well, water will help these proteins connect to each other. The vodka can help prevent the formation of gluten protein networks and aids in making a flaky crust. So this will all sort of come together into a very nice ball of your pie dough. I've always loved food and it was one of my childhood hobbies. And when I was a postdoc, I started to realize how food could actually be a powerful way to communicate science to a broader audience. There is so much science in everyday life and that if we can draw so many people in to learn about food, we can highlight some of the examples and um, ways in which science helps us to better understand our food.